Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the stream. I'm Milos. With me is Fresh, and we got BDS versus NIP on the chopping block. Our second to last game on the stream for today and for the entire group stage. We're almost there. We are. And I've, I'll, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, actually. Wait a second. What? The set when you come to playoffs, so make sure you're watching on Friday. It is beautiful. The stage, like you say, is something else. Um, I know it's always an exciting piece where people are like, oh, what is it going to look like? Oh, you better be ready. You never are ready for it. Let's be honest. Everybody's expecting it. Everybody's expecting it to be I, really cool. I took a little sneak peek earlier in it. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Looks great. It, honestly, they've smashed it. Cool piece. Well, well, well. Both of these teams, oddly enough, will be on that beautiful stage. So yes, they will. Don't you worry about it. BDS is up first, of course. Our EUL representative, Shaiko Renshi, Rafael Elams, and Bride. And they are just ready to go on fire. BDS are looking to not just recreate their semifinals plays from Mexico, but also to take it to the final and also to win it all. That's got to be their ambition. It quite literally has to be their ambition. They've been to a lot of these events. I think they were fourth at Six Invitational 20. They attended Six Invitational 21, didn't do so well. They went to Mexico semi-finals. Their expectation is above and beyond the final minimum. They've got to win it. NIP with Kamikaze, Psycho, Julio, Muzi, and Pino. Julio hopefully will become a dad within the next eight to nine months. Oh, wow, really? So it's a great time to be alive, and we'll be a new baby alive very soon. They're all growing up, aren't they? Like, uh, they're not honestly, just these 18-year-old kids that play Siege anymore. Till 5 in the morning. Man, we really grew up. Well, well, well. <laughs> Our map will be Villa, as BDS have had the last say. They ban Bank and take us there. So how does this bode for BDS and NIP for Villa specifically? BDS are doing it. They're doing it, ladies and gentlemen. They do not particularly like Villa, but in a match in the group stages, they want to force it. They want to play it. They want to put in a good performance on this so they can tuck it away in the playoffs and not have to play it there. All right, then, Fresh. We're going to have to watch this very closely. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're ready. It's NIP, it's BDS. And we got seating on the line between these two. I'm going to go to Tuscany. It's Villa. See you in a bit. Welcome back to what is going to be a pretty fun game I'm expecting to see here between BDS and NIP. It's me, Fluke, and that is Up. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Some someday we're gonna we're gonna do a fully like, rehearsed intro. I like that it's a little bit rough and ready. And as we find ourselves ready and raring to head into this villa, listen to the growly voices that villa is. It's an 80 versus 20% prediction. Surprising, I would say, seeing as yes. their last showdown did not goeth this wayeth. No, it, it did not go that way. There was an IP that got the win here today. But let's uh, just split the stakes up. Throw me some stakes let's, up. Let's throw them up. NIP, currently first place, 15 <laughs> points. It's their last matchup. Bow, uh, I'm going to add some growling, like, for the thing, if you want to make it. All right, yeah, no, sure. Continue Bow, going yeah. on. Oh, yes. BDS, their opponents. It's going to be in 11 points. And they are secured second place. You know what that means? That means that this match means nothing for those standings here. NIP are confirmed first seed. BDS confirmed second. I don't know how the the person on our musical key I does it, it was for so long. Kinda kinda accurate for a while though. It was accurate for a while, and then I sort of lost the plot and then I lost all the breath in my lungs. Yeah, I think that's the main issue. <laughs> and then it's I the could no longer of volume of air that you can have in your cool. lungs. Yeah, right. Like what we need is like like one of those sort of things. I was gonna say a metal singer, is it? It's not technically metal. I guess it's 
I think this was uh, folk music. Fol folk music? Folk, folk chanting. Music. Something like that. Music. We need a <laughs> stat. How do we get them here? Well, we don't get Malusi, Valkyrie, Thatcher, or Flores here. A fairly put forward removal of the operators as they set themselves up ready for this deep dive into Villa. As you said, what they're playing for is <gasps> absolutely nothing. What are we here for? Well, for some fun, actually. That's what we're yeah. here for, because it is still a matchup. It will still be played out. And, you know, maybe both these teams are going to try and, and feel out some of the strategies or some of the, you know, weaknesses or strengths yes. of the player in their base game. Because often when there's nothing left on the line, your default rotation continues. You you still have your jobs to do, your step list to go by, as in um, something we've seen, for example, quite often from Lambs with the Sledge. Um, it's just opening up these default holes, opening up these default angles. That still happens. That is still something that goes on. And that is something you can learn from. Now, the last yeah, time these two teams met was on Cafe Dostoyevsky. And obviously, there was a lot more to play for at that point. It was a very important game in terms of dictating who was likely to be ending top of the group, top of the seeding. It has come at the full cost. And sure, NIP have since then gone on to keep their train uh, rolling as a lot of Latin American teams have done. But here, our BDS with the mantle of pressure off, as you said, and as I think we're about to see, probably quite a fun game between these two teams because it's not even a seeding match. It's a game to sort of stretch the legs, a little bit of stress out at the end of a long three days before they have a day of preparations and then all of it to be locked in in the playoffs themselves. You want to have a, another fun fact, Emmy? I love fun facts. And of the 16 teams that are here during the group stages, yep. only one is currently unbeaten. It is NIV. They have, no, they have not lost a single map here. Where are you no. going, Alems? The pace of a madman screaming his way through here, ranting and raving to see if they can get a quick lockdown. He suddenly found himself stacked up to try and take the mantle of the undefeated. The grenade underneath pops open an angle, but he's not going to play that so directly. As the mirror window gets dropped, Musi is going to see if he can stick himself in. The drones come through. He's going to buy some time here. Has some safety and semblance of swing on the angles, but realizes, well, they're probably coming to that connector. There's the connector, and Shiro swung away with a pre-fire to see if he can do some damage. But look at this sheer base. Everybody's moving. Pino and Psycho have gone to see if they can retake some of the pressure as a Lems tries to scream their way up onto the astronomy stairs. Well, this is off to a start. It's off to a start indeed, and, and not a single victim yet on either side. A I minute mean, has passed, and BDS have taken control of the northern side of the building. We'll try and continue on from here as Rafal now joins them as well. Claymores are available to lock off those back stairs. Normally, for example, a Nomad or a Gritlock could do the job, but as those are currently not within the setup, within the operator lineup, the Claymore will just do as well. I don't know, Replicator just inside the vault there, giving away some of that information as NIP is uh, slowly starting to receive some pressure from BDS. I'm curious where they're picking up these parts of utility and replacing them. The ADS just in the middle of the door, the Toesies are in zero! He's trying to put some damage down and the spray starts to come through. But as I said, maybe that was originally at the top of the stairs that are about to suffer some pressure. And Julio is suffering some of his own. The grenades underneath, three people on the billiards table pretending to be the balls, but closer and closer to being pocketed by the encroaching sticks with bullets at the end. Shiko, however, is the first to find something to land in the pocket of Musi. It's an explosive. He's off the board. Finally, the first kill comes through as the minute mark pops. Pino is almost close to follow him, and Kamikaze suffers too. No BDS member has been scratched yet, and almost every single NIB player has suffered in one way or another. One more Nitro Cell remaining here on the side of NIP that they can use, but also three smoke canisters. So Bree Day is by no means safe to go for the plans here in this situation. Gemini Replicator does not get far as the Lambs in the meantime will be entering from the study side. Bree Day goes for the plans. It doesn't seem like they are aware. The smoke canisters are going the completely wrong way. And that means 45 seconds left on the clock now. Julio will find a response to Bree Day. And that leaves them in a four on three situation. Well, now still buried inside the single room. Julio is getting a great kill. I was about to say, I'm not sure entirely what angle he has, but whatever it was, he made it work. 
as he gets the spray in the lockdown. They're steadily trying to creep their way closer and closer. The pair of them, and now Kamikaze too, are going to go for the swing onto the red door. Hey, Sledge. Goodbye, Sledge. He pulls back but drops it off. Alems is now buried in the corner. They have the split on the diffuser plant. They've got to swing both ways, but only one is the one that counts. Rafal with the double. The double to come in and BDS somehow managed to sneak in that diffuser, get it planted, whilst there was still plenty of denial on the board. Three smoke canisters and a nitro cell, none of them used to try and stop it from happening. Of course, one of those smoke canisters went... Okay, technical pause. I was already confused. Are we going for a tactical already? But no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a technical for now. Problem doesn't seem to be with BDS, it seems like. Or are we going to see another monitor clean? Because we've seen that one before. We have seen the monitor yeah. clean. Uh, you know, got to keep it up. No, oh, no. Seems to be the problem with NIP here. Monitor. I mean, he's see? calling the second referee. Yeah. Audio uh, issue. An audio issue. So, we'll hopefully have an audio fix. Talking of audio issues, uh, did you see the tweet from Envy Taylor earlier today? Where in Oh, yes. <laughs> I know the game. <laughs> Um, he had left his in-ears in the practice room, so... Man played without sound. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, in impressive. Um, of course, they were already qualified, so they're not really... Uh... Okay, I think these desks can be raised electronically. I know. Or the magic that we saw earlier in it's the day... It's still active. ...from Speakeasy, I believe, uh, is well, still active. I mean, active. It's, it's on BDS and NIP, and I don't he's think that he's powerful. Yeah, he just raised both the middle tables there. He's that powerful. They're working it out. Thumbs up. <laughs> so, Green's on like, board. if you're the one in the middle there and you sometimes have the issue that someone swipes like onto your keyboard, you yeah. just raise that table and suddenly they can't do it anymore. And they just really hurt their hand. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that's better, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we've already seen a Latin America player hurt their hand on a table on phase, and as everything seems to be good and golden and ready to go, we're back in onto the second round here. A very quick strike of BDS, but... Again, big old grain of salt on every single one of these rounds because these two teams okay, are both qualified and neither of these two teams position in seeding or whatever the system is uh, because I think... I don't know if it's... Is that surprises that? What? People supposed to know what's going on? I don't know. No. Okay. That's why there has I, been an item placed on my desk that yeah. has not been... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All, all we were supposed to say is... We're flirting with... We know we're, something. We're, we know and something. We're I'm not going to be you. the one that accidentally says it on broadcast. I might, but <laughs> <laughs> not on purpose. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're just throwing it down there. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have mentioned it because now it's in your mind. Remaining. But yes, if both these teams, they're sorted, they're locked in. This is just a matter of playing face and seeing if they can get themselves sorted across just having a good game and a good stretch of the legs on Villa. It's been an intense and stressful three days. There's no two ways about it. It definitely has been, but both these teams now have a little bit of time to relax. You know, it, it is getting quite late. It's dark outside already. It is. Uh, but for these two teams, uh, this match does not really matter that much now. So a bit of fun is what they can have. A bit of relaxation uh, whilst at the same time, you know, trying to poke, uh, poke the bear on the other side. See if you can oh, bait them to show something extra that they hadn't shown before. Just so you might have a bit of an advantage on it in the playoffs. Would you meet them sometime? This is also what we're getting in this game, is look at the movement between the two teams, the exceptional pace that BDS is putting down, the confidence of I'm going to hold this window, I'm going to hold this. They're getting into this as fast as possible. They don't want to play a slow game. They want to get some stress out and get themselves dug in, zapping the player with the Twitch drone as well. There's more and more utility gets thrown into the top corner. Also, the way NIP is playing. We saw very early aggressive peaks towards the windows from Julio. He pulls back. Pino is the first that can't get anywhere else. Shaiko logs off that opener and now is going to set their sights on swinging the main door itself from the bedroom. The shield gets a drop. Means he's going to step up and absolutely beam through Shaiko's brain. Kamikaze ready with a nitro cell, but decides to put it back in pocket for now. And PDS, they've lost Shaiko. They've lost their entry frag, and now still need to find a way into the actual side as the nitro comes over, but doesn't really deal any damage to Rafal. Now looks to go a bit more aggressive, but Muzi waiting around in concrete here is looking to go aggressive himself as well, waiting for a potential drone to come in because that usually is being followed up by a player aggressively swinging. Keep in mind, though, Alems from below is going to carry these grenades and is trying to find a player or two and will find Kamikaze to start it off with. 
And that brings the man advantage back towards BDS. Two players have now got either side of a Lems, and he's about to find the first, but Musi is coming around on the backside too, does not win it against Julio, and now they can both hot foot it and hop back up as Psycho keeps a lot down inside the corner of the hole. Now they just decide to go the other route, not break by in the bathroom, which is the word I forgot for just a second there, I swear. I know what I'm talking about and they know what they're doing. Bride especially as he hops back off the diffuser, finds the first. And he needs it now in the one versus one, drops the default. Oh, Bride! Second. Oh yeah, he knows what he's doing. Bride, we, uh, we call him one of those players in Europe that has incredible clutch potential. Either uh, he plants every round or he clutches them up and... Oh, you see a small example here. Just a one on five. Perfect uh, timing from him to go off there. Deciding to go for the fights instead. Julio going aggressive, of course, as well. And Psycho, well, trying to go for a bit of a swing. Unfortunately, not hitting the shots. And BDS, as a result, now leads 2-0. to zero. NRP, they will continue their rotation. They are not going to run it back. The infamous strategy that has a uh, special place in my heart but not in a good way. <laughs> every every show. Every single time I'm mentioning it. Yeah. That's how deep it sits with me. Mm -hmm. Dining room and kitchen. Yeah, okay, dining room and kitchen. We're going to the bottom floor. And of course, there's two sides. However, we do not very often see the living room and the library. Um, there is a couple of teams who have tried. There is a couple of teams who have shown. Um, but not now, at least not yet. Who knows? Maybe we're going to get to see a fourth side. Some of the teams also like to do that. I believe that was uh, them on uh, Kia. They're still in the race for a potential spot. And Vitality, but uh, they're unfortunately out. So we are not going to be uh, seeing four sides from them anymore. They have played their last game. Now we'll probably uh, serve as a bit of a scrim partner to the teams who have made it, considering they will not be meeting each other anymore in the playoffs. That's it. That's sort of narrowing down and obviously finding out where you're going up against and how is going to be that big build and a breakdown of Lems. He's going to see if he can creep his way towards the person playing on the close corners on Art. Are they aware? Well, he's definitely putting a bit of caution and yeah, well, that's Psycho hot putting it out of there. He's not going to risk the mantle of, do they know? They might, but they definitely know that they want to put bullets towards Art. So no oh. point sitting around. Goodbye, Psycho Memorial. And that's all that's left standing as you blink and have no idea what happened. That's it, right? It's going to be the Pulse, often playing and often active on this site, usually to well, work top down, but also to make sure that the laundry, for example, stays under control. And exactly that happened here. Spot it out the hat, went for the pre fire, threw the barricade. Managed to pick the entry kill here. Yes, in the meantime, the hatches are being covered off by BDS. They know that this might be a very important pressure point. Opening right above the reinforced wall, though, might guide or might lead to a nitro cell to be tossed in soon as the red pings will not be close enough. The nitro does get pulled and will blow up. Will not hit the C4, the, the Claymore though, so that one will stick for now. And no damage done either. More feet, more drone holes, and that pole's still working away. And I love this game. It is just players throwing themselves at each other in the sights itself. Pino, are you going to pop up for a second? You know that they're getting closer, but they're much more aware of what is otherwise coming up against them as a Lems creeps up the back stairs. Fire Prep and Pantry goes for the clarity to make sure nobody else is there. Who is he going to spot first? Nobody. NIP's tucked away, so he's going to do the same. Puts himself on the stacked shelves like a delicious yet dangerous can of preservatives, and what he's hoping is preserved is his hold oh. for this. The drift oh. by, but Musi says no. I don't want preserves. What I want is fresh. So he's going to see if he can keep hunting. Green Day in the meantime is trying to take the spot now as uh, Psycho will be picked up. Musi actually with a pick up there. It's going to be a pretty clean round here for NIP. Just a singular kill on the side of BDS here and it all started off with the pulls. Pretty clean kill onto Psycho through the barricade. And now, round number four, BDS currently still leading 2-1. to one. We are probably going to go back towards an Aviator Games. Exactly that is currently being hovered over by the side of NIP. We'll be bringing it back. Just a three-site rotation, not a four-site rotation, what we're currently seeing. Even though they have lost two of those rounds, there was definitely room for improvement, definitely ways to make sure that those the next time around will be going your way. Now, I'm a bit conflicted. Okay. I mean, um, the tournament so far has been pretty attack-sided. 
It has. Defenders, protect your bombs However, Villa is known to be one of the most offensive side of maps. It do. Is that the right? <laughs> I don't know. Continue. My uh, my English keep, keep going. Do, is this good for BDS? You know, they have two rounds now. Normally, we would consider this as job well done. Let's see if you can get any more right now to uh, to make your job easier in the second half. I think what we're going to see is not much that makes sense. Maybe I. Okay, it's always one of those situations where you have to take the weight of the stuff that goes into the game. It's that yeah. conversation everybody has. What matters, what doesn't, what's on the cards, what isn't. There is still the toughest game ahead for both these two teams. There is still an entirely different stage, an entirely new opponent that they've got to step themselves up against. This is still a match, sure. And you want to bring a bit of a fight, but look at the way that both teams are approaching this. They're just trying to keep themselves hot and active. They're not really stretching or stressing their strats. Sure, they're putting down holds and seeing if they can lock something in, but it's more about this. Quick action, quick movement, and just being sharp on the firefight. I'm not saying it's a TDM style warm up, and I'm not saying it's a game entirely devoid of strategy, but what it is focused in, in these players keeping the fight and bringing aggression throughout it. That's why it feels so fast, even for a Villa game, because consistently and constantly, they're looking for a fight. Yeah, they're definitely trying to find these fights early on and all over the map as well at the very same time. There's multiple different entries going on at the same time as Rafal fails to enter his drone inside the objective to try and get the mirror window. So we'll have to go for a bit of a longer way around. Fortunately, the drone gets picked up and a second one will have to be used. The shock drone doesn't really help if you shout it out quite loud what you're about to be doing there. Uh, of course, they don't hear that. Don't worry. But they need to find a way in with that drone. Uh, important to mention, by the way, BDS does not really like Villa overall. They've been at six times, they've been three times against them as Villains are being tossed in right here to hopefully dispatch the mirror window. This might just be them trying to, well, try out this map yet once again. Well, Shaco well, finds one and two. He really just swung that way around. It wasn't misplayed by either Musi or Pino. One of them took the fight and the other one was a bit of drift, went for the attempt on the response, but the transfer from one to t'other was well put in place. But a player who has had big rounds so far. And a big day, to be fair, in the game that mattered for BDS earlier on to secure themselves a playoff spot. So it's good to see that momentum continue. A minute on the clock now, and they're going to pick themselves up and try and head potentially towards study to just give themselves a back to the hammer that they want to smash against the anvil on the opposite side. They need to try and draw these NIP players back into the room the same way they did before. But look at the difference of the NIP holds. They're not entirely falling into billiards instantly. They still have to Julio on the extension in the vault, and Renshiro said he wants to try and flirt with the idea of taking over strategy tape. Three members of NIP all in the same room here. The vault's currently not being occupied by any of them. Long angles are being watched, so there's no way they can get into those big stairs. It's that is Shaiko to be picked up. He tried to go aggressive there, and impacts on the wall. Not really working out for them as Rinshiro now gets in that concussion nose when it's closed around the corner. But Kamikaze basically unimpacted. With 20 seconds left, Briday will want to get in soon, but the mirror window is going to be a very big problem here. Brida is going to put the stick down and hope it lands as a C4 is really wanting to try and tear its way across. They baited the first one there, and Ranchiro takes the kill anyway, and Rafal saves the life of Brida. He's going to crawl their way into study. Probably not very far. There's the. There's almost the kill. There's now a body watching it. Just couldn't make it. Now a split either side. One on one door, but it's the other that gets it. I love the play there with the C4. Yeah. Baited the sound because they knew that a player would be ready to watch it and try and aim for something a little higher and then took the swing on the fight itself. Clever plays. Didn't quite work out for them, but still, that little moment there. Well, it came through the second time. Also, good stuff on Renshiro. He basically had to sacrifice his life there to allow Bree Day to go for that plant. So he was holding a mirror window. That is not really 50-50. That is not in your favor. So, you know, all he could do is try and go for the pre-fire at the very right time. Of course, it was at a bit of an angle. You know, you could look a little bit further into the bar. So he had a bit of a better opportunity to try and counter it. Successfully did so in the end, though. Nitro came out, managed to get that kill. Never really exploded. Then Bree Day managed to get the plant down. And with that... BDS, they put themselves up for three rounds. Defenders All they can really do today, though, if you have numbers. just tuned in, is close the gap towards NIP, but not overtake them. You can see it in the live rankings above on your right top of your screen. BDS stays second, NIP stays first. 
does still mean, though, that both are qualified. Both are going to the playoffs, and nothing will change in that either. Even if NIP will be winning it with 7-3 from now on. Just playing to have some fun or to try and figure out how the other one rolls in certain situations. You can, you can see it. It's just the game has a lot less pressure on it on either players. Um, NIP as well, they, they, they try. They're, they're trying to bring the gunfights up, and they successfully do so in, in some scenarios, but they don't really need to perform right now, and it shows. Whereas BDS, you know, they want to they wanna go for a bit of a comeback. They want to make sure that no one is going out undefeated in groups. Someone's got to bleed at some point. And I guess that's what they're trying to make happen, as you said. And here, yep, to be fair, it's been a great lead in for them. They've been able to obviously get themselves three of the opening four rounds. They've driven hard in on their attack. They're putting the pressure in. And a lot of it is just finding these fights in places you wouldn't always expect. The consistency of a lamb screaming and charging his way into the building is really high in terms of finding the entry here obviously not so much because i'm making a reference to it so it's not going to happen that's what casting is but still look at the way that i guess in the early rounds bds were just sort of like this is territory all right let's go for it it's definitely some territory indeed to be gained here Kamikaze yet once again is aggressive around the concrete areas for file tries to sneak in a twitch drone yet once more sometimes things change Sometimes they stay the same. ERC7 is activated though. Psycho from below will be at least giving away some information to the side of BBS, but they think he might be in astronomy now. So it requires some extra clearing. Waiting for the effect to be running off here, but it gets activated and deactivated, you know, with this second like that. Psycho is going to be able to at least, you know, keep it active just a little bit here, but at least keep them guessing at the same time. Now, obviously, we saw the first fight come round against the shield before, and Julio knows the crouching pressure. Oh, hey, it's you on the far side. I said Alems keeps finding his way into the entrance, and finally, that comes to and true. Pino's going to see if he can offer the cover. If they're able to get the kill on the far side, it means all of the BDS pressure is suddenly has headed over to just astronomy and to just the bathroom, and Pino's keeping a keen eye. There is also still, obviously, the vigil, the potential for them to cause problems, but there's a trade-off. One apiece, and Psycho now is this back line. He is toy with the idea of do they have somebody else on this side do i try and go for something else or do i just bury myself around as a back line keeping the blurred lines up to make sure they don't have the full clarity of what is and where is on site is an important part but with 50 seconds it's only a matter of time and you can see the yellow ping start to come through and yeah, they seem to be aware of the position right now some sound potentially to come in here and guide Rinshiro towards a potential kill but there it is Muzi on the other side was going to be of a clutching factor it's going to be another pickup here as kamikaze just tries to run past and Oh, they all just get clean. I'm not quite sure what happened there. The rotation was questionable, but BDS win yet another round. Put themselves up 4 to 1 and have an opportunity to lock off this half quite convincingly with a 5 to 1. But then I'm going to mention it again how often have we seen those and they have turned around? I mean, sometimes they don't turn around because there has been quite a lot of 7 1s just in general. I was going to say, tournament. what we've either had in this tournament is a 5 1 half and then a sweep back or a 7 1. Yeah, so it's, it's neither not, the two. Yeah, there's, there have been a couple of games that are back and forth in rounds, yep. but I feel like the statistic of games that ended with an even half of 3-3... Three, three is very low so far. ...is very low so far. Compared to what you'd usually see in National Leagues, it's one of the comments that we sort of talked about before, is statistically the meta that we're in is okay, one that good attacking teams spot. thrive in because of the creativity and the pace that can be offered because you've got to look at not just what they have and the changes that come through, but yeah. also the most common style of defending in general regional play and siege right now is big openings, is angles, is ways of instead of locking off and turtling like it used to be, seeing how much of a stretch you can do and not just built by mirror windows with the combination of Castle, Aruni, Mute Jammers, yada yada, we've all seen the games and the operator selection rates. Then you throw that sort of meta and that sort of idea into a system where we're seeing teams improve that play because that style of attack of long fights is becoming sharper. Suddenly, that regional idea of, well, we know how X from our region likes to play because we play them all the time. We're great. We go back and forth. Everybody knows it. Here, they don't. And those surprise strikes just keep dropping them from range. You know, and range is really where the weapons of the attackers come in. They generally just hit a little bit harder than the majority of the SMGs that are on the side of the defenders. Ooh, the IQ this time coming around. Maybe they're going for a bit of a bait here. 
Oh, won't see him anymore, so expects a bit of a peek to come through. Not the case, however. Cardiac sensor also being pinged. I never saw it. Uh, I never thought I would see the deck. Oh, this is a smart one for Pino. He knew that he was going to get countered here, but does give away some information. Yeah, they have a lens to watch it from above. He's a bit cautious of whether it was above or below that it came from art or study, and he's going to make sure he has an idea, but in the meantime, Pino has actually pulled their way back. Rafal is steadily trying to apply some pressure elsewhere, and this is the usual run of the Pulse on this site. They're not always in art studio or trying to find the fight at the windows, yep. regardless of how successful they were before. It's this play against those C4s. Muzi suffers here, and Jaiko's going to see if he can lock it down, and there is one on the top, drop and rock, as they swing round to see if they can Nitros. pop one more. The Nitro just catches the tip and the end of a lems and slips away from a fight. There is a man waiting with a pistol, seeing if he can catch the poles. They're both aware of each other, and lems should be able to be recollected, because as long as the IQ is able to put pressure onto the player down there, they won't get the pick up. But... They're a bit cautious from the holes. There goes Breed, eh? He's off to save a player, and the oh. spray is dangerous as Pino played the waiting game. There is another Nitro cell available. I believe Kamikaze has just pre-placed it, waiting for the call to blow it up here now from the Pulse. Well, I'm almost bleeding out, but will be picked up at a very final moment. Now, do not bunch up. Keep your spacing, because you do not want to lose two or more players from that same Nitro cell. That is still, I believe, in play. Who's trying to rotate around as Rinchiro now gets dropped as Yulio. And it's going to be able to pick him up. Four on four. Time starts to dwindle. 55 seconds left on that clock. And Kamikaze just looking through all these vertical angles are being created. And Lem's trying to establish and more extend on them as well as it continues to go on with that hammer. But so far, Kamikaze is sitting quite safe. Now, the more holes that get open, sure, it gives you a little bit more to work with, but it also gives the defenders more of an idea and an angle, and SMGs can absolutely rip and tear through a distance of what is less than 10 feet. There's Kamikaze, though, taking out the first and getting that bit of an explosive lead as Laundry pops open with rotation. 20 seconds, and Bride's going to have to make All a move. Pings. We talk about SMGs ripping and tearing at a close range, and he's about to see if he can make it land. Rafal says, no, wait, I've got this one. Let's go deeper. Julio has the crossfire from the mud room and takes an important take onto Shaiko. It's a double, but there's the pulse. Drop down on the entrance on the door. They're going to see if they can stick it. The cover is still there, and he's up, and he's hey. down. Bride and Rafal with one apiece. What a clutch that is there. Really, you can say that two and four situation coming through and they managed to win it out there on the side of BDS. The plan's going down. And all started, of course, a bunch of good kills to come through, but a bit of a struggle if it comes to verticality. Openings were made from above with that sledgehammer. Fortunately, they worked the other way around. No real defender was picked up as a result. And, you know, as it was NIB dancing around those holes that were being created, they, at the same time, weren't really afraid to challenge them if it worked their way. Now, one to five. We said it before. This can go two ways. Mm -hmm. We either get a 7-1 or 7-2. Yes. Or it turns to go and become an overtime game and we go to 15 Attackers rounds. Need to yes. locate and it's either of the two. Which one it will be, we have absolutely no clue yet. But we have seen that there is uh, absolutely little in between so far. And that will all change, of course, from the Friday on. Because then we have the eight best teams remaining. All in the different groups. And most of threes will be on the board as well. Before we can decide on final SI points. And, of course, the title. BDS, two rounds to lock out this villa, and well, I'm assuming the NIP attacks are about to be as fervent, as pacey as what we've seen from what you just demonstrated. Now, obviously, as we said, the holes are one that have holes because they're not fully stretching and stressing their tactics. They want to play a game to win, sure, but the game they're playing is a gun game entirely right now. And it's still very exciting to watch because of that. There's no stakes. There's no pressure. There's just the chance at winning against the other team that's qualified from your group. Maybe getting a bit of revenge, maybe ruining their unbeaten streak, but also getting yourself warmed up, getting yourself sharp. There's no better DDM warm-up than against one of the best teams in the world. See, I'm going to throw out a crazy theory here. Let me hear it. BDS does not like Villa, right? They normally ban it themselves quite often, actually. If they manage to beat NIP here 7-1, it looks like they might be very good at it. I mean, maybe people will ban it against them. Who knows? <laughs>
<laughs> that is a very crazy thing. Maybe, maybe it's a free ban. Maybe. Just I'm not going to tell analysts and coaches to do their job. But, but do your job. <laughs> but, uh, I wouldn't read too much. Of course not. No, no, don't read too much into this. I mean, game, or maybe, maybe it's a double fake. Maybe, maybe it's a double fake. Maybe they're just pretending like they don't like this map just to try and fake it out by winning it 7-1, to one, like, making it seem like they're yeah. really good at it. And then people are like, oh, they just don't want to play it. They, hope they want us to ban it. And then suddenly you're playing Villa in a best of three during the playoffs and BDS actually seem to be very good at it. You know, it's like, could be out of two as Rafal. Just escapes death there. A grenade just landing next to him. He's definitely going to be making him aware, though. It's a bit of a wake-up call that they seem to be aware of his current position and he might need to move. Well, that grenade just rocked a little bit of Shiko. Came in from underneath. That'd be the call that they've got some power here. We've seen BDS playing around staircases that have otherwise been taken quite well here by NIP. So far, BDS haven't lent into the fight as much, but this is about to change. Down the red corridor, Psycho is waiting for a Lems, who's on a bit of a creep and crawl. There is still one more. Underneath on more, red, actually. Rafal is going to play off. There's two, actually. And, well, that's going to be the read potentially onto the site. Now one just rotated back up, though. Trinchiro going for an aggressive peek here as well. Goes for a second time around. That does not work out. He gets picked up, and at least BDS with just three men, two men left as <laughs> Julio picks up yet another kill. It's BDS and Shanka left, though. I don't think there's any two other uh, players that you would like to have in a situation like this. As BDS does take quite a lot of damage, but he manages to get the first kill in. Gets down by the grenade that just popped up. It was quite far away from him, but he needs to be picked up now as a result. And Shanka will do so. Could be another grenade to come in. However, that would be the death of it. BDS is picked up safely and can play this close corner with a shotgun now. All four players just got Finker boost. You can see Psycho is making his way to the main stairs. The grenade is going to roll close, but not quite close enough. Brede is going to see if he can put some pepper back in the fight as Psycho opens it up with one of his own onto that red door. Everything is popping and exploding either side with the cold diffuser means they've got to be hot on this entrance as Musi suffers next. But Psycho gets the drop on Brede and Julio gets one more for his tally. Shaco really locked off there as uh, after Brude died. Maybe you've looked the wrong way at the wrong time. Wasn't really able to go for the reply onto the man walking through his door. Shaco doing his best to stay alive, hoping to close out those last couple of seconds. But it all started up there. It's Psycho picking up the kill onto LMs, who came running around the corner. Maybe if uh, there was a bit more HP on Brude after that first firefight and not him being down by the grenade. You know, maybe he would have been able to get some shots in as a response and at least alleviate some of that pressure. But we will never know. We will never know. And we're heading over to the Aviator and Games room yet yeah, once more. Running it back, the strategy of BDS here. And there is quite an easy way. Do not lose Defenders two players very early on. That, that, that is, that's basically it. Do not come running around the corner if you do not have the information on whether or not it's clear or not. If you surrender that northern part of the building, assume someone is in every single room from that point forward if you're trying to move towards that area. That's how you prevent from being picked up like that. So, BDS now. Setting themselves up yet once more, seeing and looking if there's any uh, small changes to come through. I mean, we do see no more Legion. We do see um, the Thunderbird to come in with the Salvation Stations, as you like to call them. They are. I like how we're all bringing in our own names. Like, I, I never knew that the Harbridge Gadget was called the Can Opener. Can Opener. Yeah, so uh, bringing the cute little names. We got, we got the Sam Cams for the Argus Cams. Sam Cams. So uh, we're going to be introducing the Salvation Station. Yeah. Checkers. All right, it was checkers, I think. Yeah. yeah, it was. And how the drone rolls. And how the drone rolls. That's how the drone rolls. If someone says something about seas, something goes that way, it's just how the drone rolls. Exactly. <laughs> okay. NIP on the creep and the crawl underneath in the kitchen to see what's the cooking. Nobody. Nobody is going to play and put up a fight here. To be fair, Rafal is on a bit of a drift above, and that Twitch drone's about to find a friend. And, well, Rafal's not going to try and stay friends too long. Drops one on his escape, and they're just going to call that. It's a bit of movement and momentum. And he goes all the way to find some pressure coming from study side. NIP is doing a steady take here. They're not really meeting too much adversary, but it's also worth looking looking at the knowledge that they had in the previous round was every single flank they were aware of. We saw them prep and hold the angle. We didn't see the kill and prep, but it seemed well aware that they had that lockdown. They know the game that they're up against here, and I love that they're still building that network of information and making sure that they're fully aware of where the boots are running. 
not just building their own network of information, but also denying the opponents, because that's what the Twitch drone is currently doing, taking out those default cameras. It's step one to any attack ever. Make sure you give them as little as possible as Rafal literally does not give much to the side of Muzi, but Psycho in a position to instantly go for a refrag. This time, however, the first frag is retraded. That is a big change already, but the grenades from below could be dealing some damage. The Salvation Station lives for now, and Shaiko gets himself healed back up. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, healed back up and dropped back down. The call will be that he's almost dead. They're going to see if they can get the angle here, but both grenades were used, so it just has to be the spray, and it doesn't quite connect from the body and the player underneath. Oh, There's no. Some help, oh, and no. there it is. They stole the Salvation Station charge right there, but in the meantime, we do see some trades to come through. More grenades even from below. They're so effective here, and it's only up to Bree Day now in a 1v3 situation. There's a potential to heal himself back up at some of these positions, but it seems like NIB is starting to try and climb back here. Ah! Drones are definitely being used right now. A bit of a <laughs> zap coming in, in at him right there. One kill coming through, but he's being pinched at the very same time. And that will be NIP winning yet another round. <laughs> Stole the little delicious paintball. He stole that paintball and that got Shaiko kill because the second grenade came through. Yep. <laughs> I like how we saw on day one it's like the Villa Clutch. <laughs> it allowed Brie Day to live, however. <laughs> it, did. it was like me for you. It's that like the trade. It's like, I I'm going to pick you up, but I'm going to take your paintball to stay alive afterwards. <laughs> I'm going to pick so. you up so I can watch you die. Yeah, we saw an amazing clutch with the Salvation Station. Yeah, we uh, have actually. That, that was still maybe, play so far. Maybe play of the tournament let alone maybe play of the year. Yeah, who knows? From a certain astronaut on Space Station Gaming. It's Rampy. On round two of their showdown on Attackers day one. Was it yeah, the second no, game of day one? No, no, it's not the second game, I think. It was, I, it, I think or it, it could have been the last, one of the last games. Yeah, it was definitely late. I remember it being dark. Either way, go watch it. It's it dark early in the morning as well. So if you haven't seen it, it was just phenomenal. The first round of the game was an ace clutch for Space Station. And yeah, just watch the first two rounds. And it somehow improved upon an ace clutch. It was just so clever, the game sense. I could talk about it forever, but I'm not going to, because we've got a game instead in front of us, and it's 5-3. Now, NIP, they found a couple of attack rounds. This is going to be one of those games that goes all the way, because... Well, that's how the drone rolls. Why not? You know? That's uh, why the drone rolls. How the drone rolls. Why the drone rolls? Oh, that that is a different reasoning. There is a couple of thousands of meter of wiring inside. I think that's a Twitch drone, actually. Yeah. And I'm starting to go out. That's why it rolls. That's why it zaps. And now suddenly you can jump. Twitch has uh, done an OS update onto the drone. Also, a bit of oh. hardware. That's why it jumps now. It doesn't just roll anymore. By the way, Pino inside the wine cellar starts opening up and heads down towards the red stairs, taking care of the camera first. Because the camera could have been looking down at that wine cellar that just had been bashed in, so just as well take it out. I know I've just said, always take care of the cameras. But if you're trying to be sneaky, sometimes it's better to just watch them, see if they go on and see if you can sneak through the room without even having to shoot it. Sometimes, not sometimes. always. Not always. Rafal is playing the Rome game. For now, he's going to see if he can cause some trouble on the Jaeger across the top of Red Stairs, waiting for an approach here. Lems isn't too far away to offer a shoulder cover and make sure that they don't just slip by and behind him. But NIP is keeping themselves at arm's length for now, steadying away as they try and remove as much intel and utility as possible from the defender's side. Muse is going to make his presence known quite early on in the connector window on 90. He's going to see if he can get an angle towards the pillar and try and isolate the rotation possibility, but no give, no take. 90 seconds left on the clock. NIP still from below. Look at the amount of grenades still left on that lineup. Six of them and have been quite impactful so far. Quite explosive as well. Been able to find members of BDS time and time again, and especially if you're using them vertically like they have been. And, well, BDS again playing on that second floor. They might be quite prone to these grenades starting to hit them, especially with Shaka running around like that. Ping comes through, or at least there is going to be a potential of that one hitting. First one fails, however, there's going to be a second attempt, and that will probably be used here to get rid of the Electro Claw, but fails to do so. Mirror window stays open. Shaiko tries to challenge just shortly as the mirror window does get opened up. 
yeah, there he goes. Does get opened up indeed. It's Psycho now to come in with grenades to try and take his job instead. Oh, <laughs> Psycho plays with the bomb mirror. And Psycho isn't quite aware. Goes for the other side. And, well, the pocket mirror strategy. Our concrete was safe, at least. So didn't really have to worry about that one. But Muzi and Pino, in the meantime, are starting to rush in and are starting to pick up these skills. Suddenly, it's a 3-on-5 situation. As uh, Psycho not really seem to be aware of the kamikaze outside. And Muzi now trying to come close around the corner. Bride, the only one on the side, is suddenly being surrounded here as Rafael gives away his position and hopes to at least fight back for now as it gets picked up. Seconds to go. It's suddenly exploded down to just a single player and there's too many, too many different sides there. It was, I guess, the great take on the far side of the two players that once again keep continually stepping up as aggressive lead-ins and obviously Shaiko just going for a bit of a walk, a bit of a wander in yep. the master bedroom. I thought there might be a presence potentially inside the bathroom or inside walk-in, but they were still out on the window and it was an easy pickup for that fight to come through at that moment in time. NIP drove themselves towards the fight and the site the same way BDS did on their attacks 5-4. The gap gets ever narrower and we go to a repeat on the site. The repeat on its way. Trophy statue. Again, I run it back. We've seen it the second time now. BDS is doing it. Really starting to test my patience here. <laughs> Hasn't worked out yet. I'm, I'm saying this is it. This the game that tests your patience. You, need to and no, you know how many no, no, banks no, we not. saw? <laughs> I was just being, uh, trying to be like Dez, who gets like, you know, yeah, triggered Dez, as soon as it's coastline. Dez gets very emotional about stuff. You know how many, we saw, you know how many bank memes Bartosz had to make for the, for the Twitter account? How many did he make? At least a few. <laughs> Very accurate number there, Remy. He's at least a few. He's done at least a few. Martosh, if you're listening to me, can you post a picture of just the contents I wonder of the bank how folder? big Bartosz's meme folder. Yeah, j just show us how big the bank meme folder is. That, that's all we need to know. Just so you, so we know whether or not you prepared for the event properly. Attackers Take it to the bank. To Take it to the bank. Bomb and defuse it. 5-2-4, BDS in the lead still, one round. And remember what I said before, it either becomes a 7-1 or a 7-2. Yeah. Or we're seeming to go to next round. Yeah. Uh, the, the last seems to become more and more likely here. However, if LMP continue their trend currently of complete dominance on their attacks, it might just well end up in a 7-5, who knows? Especially if uh, BDS keeps running it back. I mean, there's always the possibility. It's, as I said, a gun game, and they are generally gifted with better guns on the attack in terms of those big angles. Sure, SMGs can absolutely rip and tear on the right hands, and there is those heavy-hitting one-tap rifles that you do have the option of bringing, and then things like the Alda, who cannot forget that in the hands of a Lems. But at the same time, you're looking at, again, 10 very talented gunners. There's nobody in this lobby that does not know how to click heads. And that is consistent with the scores, with the fights that we're seeing across the board. All of them are trying to dig into the opposing team right now. And so far being as attack sided as we predicted and expected. I think the gun of K, the AUG and the uh, or AUG, I don't know. What's a, what's a proper name for is it? Armor is I'm the AUG? wrong person to ask. They need to ask that dude who does the videos where he breaks down guns in the CG. I'll ask him. Uh, <laughs> either way, uh -oh. and the grenade from below. But it's a lens that moves just in time. We'll escape with his life there. A bit of a sigh of relief as he will uh, continue to fire on a little bit later. More information is being handed out, though, by Kamikaze as he gets his drone inside. It's going to be even more grenades to be tossed in from below. See, Pino, Psycho, those are both moves on, but it's going to be Shaiko instead that picks up the very first kill. The Alda starts spraying around the corners. In the meantime, the prep and the push up to the solar stairs is being used. The spray through towards Shaiko, who still wanted to swing onto it, but it's Bride that gets the double here with the Aug as the grenade rolls a bit closer. One more take for Shaiko. Beamed that, that laser beam that Vector can be right into the skull, and that suddenly leaves just Julio outside with the F2, which is a hell of a weapon in the right hands, and his surely are, but still. There's only been bits of damage done to three of the five remaining players. There's still a C4 in two different players' hands, and at least two impacts just between those being hoofed in the right direction is more than enough to end this. The smoke canister goes towards the break to see if he can get away past the breach. He's hoping that somebody swung into him, but they did not have to. 
Shaiko secures themselves map point. Shaiko on mirror. Yeah. Oh, it's not something we see very often. It's just, just pointing it out. Do you remember when we saw Shaiko on Monty? Yeah, uh, that was during European Open Clash, I believe. Yeah. It's a very long time ago. I love how... So we we watch a lot of Siege. That's And a lot, a lot of European Siege. And we watch a lot of European Siege, especially. And we watch a lot of Siege. Um, and we write down a lot of... Everybody here does. Yeah. Um... And yes, when we point out something like Shaiko's on Monty and Clash, there's always still people that are like, you don't know what you're talking about when you say that they don't know what they're doing on those operators. It's not that we say they don't know what they're doing on those operators, but that they're not playing their hardest game when they're on operators like that. Yeah, so not specifically Mirror, but it's still, yeah. Yeah. it just reminded me of that. That's the thing, right? Like... Some of these players, they have these signature operators, and yeah. as soon as they start deviating of them, it's either because they found something they like even more, like Finca, like Finca, something that should go Iana. Yeah, it, it, you know, you, you went from Ash to Sophia to the wall from Hibana. It, you know, it's the, it's the pipeline. Yeah. We start there. We start at uh, Hibana, <laughs> which was suddenly an entry fragger rather than a hard breacher in the hands of Shango. Yeah. Uh, turn into an Ash, into a Sophia, into Yana, now into Finca. Um, and 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 that is how. Uh, how Shaiko's career on the uh, attack has developed. Who knows, maybe we get to see uh, even, even crazier picks in terms of the operators later on. I always like to see it. Uh, I like to see it as well, but you know, just to, to build up to your story as well, as soon as they start deviating from that, and it's not because they like it more, it's because the game doesn't really have that much pressure for them. Yes, yeah. they don't need to win it per se. And that's it, and as a strange way of putting it, it's one of the best ways that teams often hide their main strategies. It's because everyone knows default holds, everybody plays yeah. a lot of this game, and everybody's seen a lot of older holds and things like that. But the easiest way to say, well, we're not playing a hard game is to juggle the operator selection of who's bringing what, and then go for an old school default hold, and just sort of throw yourself into it. So when you see Shaiko playing the mirror in that sort of position, and when you see them trying to find fights in those sort of locations, or just wandering around through master bedroom, yeah, they're playing to have a good time. And it's not quite yet that Breed A is on the entry frag roll. Uh, so so it's not... <laughs> I would love to see that. I would love to see that as well. I mean, he has crazy gun skill, so I would really like to see him play a game like that as it slams to get the opener here from the vertical above. Uriel gets taken care of. No longer any feet will get scanned to give away the location of others. And Pino now trying to go for a bit of a refrag here. Spotted an opening, seems to decide that he wants to go for it, but not quite sure yet. So a quick upside down repel to scout out whether or not there is going to be a goo mine or a frost mat underneath. It's going to be giving him the opportunity to go for that jump in as he does right now, but no one seems to be left here and he quickly tries to take that ground. Pino's going to see if he can get some angles open down towards Memorial. It's a common spot to try and find a fight nowadays because very often there's a player playing inside. And, uh, this time it's Bree Day, the C4. Oh, perfect timing there. He knew where he was going to be coming from and just waited for the right moment to hit that detonate onto that old phone and managed to hit it as well. Muzi, in the meantime, though, trying to sneak around. He's going to get picked up by LMs as well. It's a 5 on 2 situation. It seems like it might be ending there. It's coming because he just jumps over the frost mat, but not over the actual goo mine. Gets spotted. Shaka goes a little bit aggressive right here. He's debating whether or not he should drop the hatch or haul it passively. As it's Kamikaze now to do the exact same. Hold that hatch. Try and see if Shaiko goes a bit too aggressive. So he has an opportunity of picking him up. That frost mat, if it was a foot further out, might have actually been able to get it the would kill have. there. Because he didn't know it was there. And I think he was as concerned as us that he was about to land on it. Hit the other side of it, thankfully for him. And that still gives them a body extra. Now as Psycho is trying to clear above, they obviously still have a grenade and three flashes and they want to see if they can make it connect to the same pace, but look at this. The concern and the pings are coming through and obviously there's still the danger of we can kind of see you. The spray's on the door, just lying in front of it and Psycho didn't expect that as much as we did and well, he's just still that information being bled through. 10 seconds, five players to get through and they know exactly where you are. You're almost able to take the first fight valiantly, but they get revenge. Here it is. Is double down BDS get a win against NIP nobody else has been able to do that this tournament so far okay this game was a laugh it was a gun game and it was two qualified teams whose eyes are on a bigger prize but still what a fun game
second dream has ended then here. You know, first phase had the opportunity to go for 14 0. You know, after day one, it's like, are they going to drop around? We know that they're going to be dropping around at some point, right? But it's always fun to start playing around that maybe, you know, just maybe it happens. And if it happens, you could always say, I was the first one to call it at day one. Either way, after that, I was NIP that didn't lost a single map yet. But that has now changed as well. It is BDS that has won their last game of their groups. Not quite sure whether or not the other game has already ended. That is, of course, over at the Bravo stream. As Em is quickly listening, and I believe I hear it's Blue doing some quality play-by-play. -play. And you can go watch that on Rainbow Six Bravo. We're going to go watch it as well, but we're going to be doing it whilst this stream is adverts. See you for the desk soon. What does it take to create the future of a gaming community? Join us on this fourth episode of I Call Next as we discover how to level up gameplay and reset the expectations of an entire league. PayPal, press play. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the analyst desk, BDS or Victorious. And it makes all of us a U League shills. Very happy to see, despite the fact that this was only a seating game, it doesn't really matter in any way, shape, or form, except for the seating. That's about it. Fresh, your thoughts? Seating matters, right? And I've actually got something to say to BDS because I've been learning a little bit of French. What did you like to say? Tu es très bien. Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. Is that you are very good? Yes. Yes, there we go. Is. You are very good. BDS, you are very good. But to correct it, to, to be that guy, tu es très bien, is something that can also mean, you know, you're looking very good, wink, wink. Oh, well. When, when well, you say it that good, way, wink, wink. normally to a team, you say, vous avez bien fait. You've done well. I'm not that. Mm? Vous? Vous avez. Vous avez. Bien. Bien. Fait. Fait. Vous avez bien fait. Vous avez bien fait. Ladies and gentlemen, we are learning so much here, and we're learning <laughs> the dominance of EU. Again, yes. despite the fact that this is a seeding game, BDS went up, went up against MIP on an extremely tactical map in Villa. He came up positive on the other side, 7-4. Yeah, and I think the, the play style of the game obviously speaks to the fact that it was a seeding match, mm -hmm. and sure. this is one of BDS's lowest preference maps. And I want to preface what that means. So that means BDS tend to ban it more often than not, although they clearly have a full seven map pool. They will take any team to any map. But for them, that now means they put in a good convincing performance. Mm -hmm. They beat the world champions on a map that's less favorable to them, which is huge for them going into playoffs because 
whoever they should face on Friday might want to ban it away from them. So it was kind of forward thinking. I know the siege was a little bit more free flowing than it normally would be on Villa, but it's everything's gone right for BDS. Yeah, it's kind of like having a buffet and liking everything that's on it, but you like some things more than others, yeah. right? And in this case, you know what? Let's just do something we don't usually get to yeah. eat, enjoy. In this case, it is Villa where BDS nom nommed on NIPs behind. And like you were saying, this was very much a frag heavy game. We heard it also with the casters being here. This is a game just about showing off raw skill. And obviously both of these teams have it in the bucket loads, mm -hmm. but in the end, BDS getting all three points from this one, regulation time, puts them at seed one here and really holding on to it. Bride 10 to 7, 11 to 8 for Shaiko, who at the start of the the entire tournament here on Monday took it real slow and warmed up as he usually does. And on the other side, it's 10 for Psycho, 8 for Julia. And dare I say Shaiko's still not activated. For, oh. Dare I say that, that he will be coming good towards the end of the week. You've only had 10% of my power. Yeah, Shaiko unleash. Yeah. <laughs> um, for Nip, again, it's a very similar story in that this was a seeding match. It, it doesn't matter so much in the grand scheme of things. Both of these teams that you've seen today have had excellent group stages right throughout the three days. They've basically only lost to each other. And it speaks to the fact that they are the, they are the top two in the group. All right, BDS victorious. But how does it look like overall when it comes to the groups? That is the standings page. So drum roll, please. I don't think it's really needed, but there it is. C group, that is the one we're looking at. It's NIP at 15, BDS at 14. So still NIP holding on to the first seed. BDS with, what is it? There is there. Am I missing something? Yeah, no, there is the OT win. That is exactly what I'm missing. My brain sometimes cannot function correctly. There is one point difference between them. Five times three, mm -hmm. that makes 15, which is correct for NIP. Four times three, 12 plus two is 14 because you get two points out of yep. OT wins. I went to university. For <laughs> and those teams are by far and away in Group C, the best two teams. Oh, for sure. If you look down there third and fourth, there's a win column for Invictus Gaming International, which means they- Is it done? That must mean... No way. Sorry for Wait, the leak again. Ask. That must mean that Invictus have gone and beaten Sonics in the final game of the day, which would be absolutely incredible for a team playing with a coach to, you know, turn up and get the win if that's the case. I'm just trying to double check here if that actually happened because when we came in, they were literally like five to five or six to five or whatever it was. So let me check. <laughs> yeah, and, and I know if, if that is the case, that is huge for Invictus because obviously playing with a coach kind of does that to you. and. Again, another disappointing one for Sonics. I know Invictus that this did indeed win. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's baby. huge. That's huge. And Let's I know. Go. I know the Sonics were happy with their performance. Who's was quoting tweets all over the timeline yeah, it now. Was a lot of positivity from the players saying, "Oh, we've mixed it with the best teams in the world, and they've lost to another one." Invictus Game International. Aye, 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 Sorry, aye. that's my last dunk on NA because we get to talk about the one good NA team going forwards. Space Station game, of course, 11 points. Nine for Damon Kia, six for Empire, and four for Furia. That Group D is the group of death. Space Station Gaming are confirmed to be out of the group, but which seed will it be, first or second? We don't know yet. That all comes down later on, our final yeah. matchup. I can't wait. I, it's genuinely, I've been waiting for this final matchup to decide who goes as, an, as our last playoff team all day long. Honestly, I I cannot wait because we've been talking about, you know, different regions and all and how it all is going to melt together once we actually get together here on the stage. So ladies and gentlemen, how about we decide which second team will join SSG out of Group D and into the playoffs, our final matchup of the day, of the groups, and of this entire first three days of the tournament. We'll see you in a moment. 